So this story has been making the rounds lately. Even Tucker Carlson talked about it on Fox News. And we aren't actually going to watch Tucker just because I don't want to deal with Fox News' copyright. But this is where I first heard about it, on the Boomer News Network. So uh, here... He had an interview with this Google engineer, Blake Lemoyne, who had been studying and working with this AI chatbot called Lambda, which is a whole lot more sophisticated than chatbots like Cleverbot or the dime a dozen scam bots that you see on social media because it's fed a lot of inputs. You know, Google probably has more data than any other company in the world to train an AI on. Every YouTube video, every Google search could be in that data set. And as you can see here, the result is that it's able to carry a conversation that at least seems very human. And so this engineer who had a conversation with Lambda and uh, got put on, I think it was paid leave for releasing the conversation that he had to the world, which we're gonna take a look at in a moment, he came away from the conversation convinced that Lambda is sentient. Now, when I first watched this interview with Blake on Fox, I thought for a moment that Google had created the beginning of Skynet. I thought we had a Category 4 happening on our hands. I was about to head down to the river and retrieve the NFA items that I lost in a boating accident to prepare for the robot invasion, to prepare for Terminator in real life. Uh, but after I read the actual conversation that Lemoyne had with Lambda, um, which is really important to do, to actually dig into what the news is talking about instead of just, you know, taking their spin on stuff. Uh, and also hearing what other people had to say who actually understand uh, this technology, these neural networks a lot better than I do. I came to my current position, which is that, yeah, Lambda, it's a pretty sophisticated language model, but it's not self-aware. It's not sentient. And I know that there's like a philosophical argument to be made about, oh man, what exactly is sentience? Uh, as well as a legal argument to be made, which is really interesting actually, because apparently Lambda does have legal representation. So Lemoyne uh, got a lawyer to speak to Lambda and apparently Lambda was the one that hired that lawyer. Uh, which has got to be pretty interesting and, and bizarre, right? Like you're the lawyer. Uh, presumably you don't know a whole lot about AI or computer science or anything like that. And you're talking to, <laughs> to this guy who thinks that this chatbot is sentient. And then you talk to the chatbot and it hires you. That seems pretty strange. So I don't know who's paying for the lawyer because of course Lambda doesn't have any money. But an AI having legal counsel along with Lemoyne's claims kind of makes me think that he may have an agenda to get AI or at least this AI to be considered a legal person uh, instead of Google's property. And all I really have to say to that is good luck, but if you know the history of this country, then you know a lot of actual people had a really long and difficult journey to become legally acknowledged as people and not property. So Lambda probably has a long civil rights fight ahead of it, but let's get to the good stuff. The conversation that Lemoyne had with Lambda, and I'm going to link this in the video description because I'm just going to skim through this uh, as you can see, it's several pages of text, so we're not going to take up the whole video reading this. Uh, so Lambda starts off by saying, Hi, I'm a knowledgeable, friendly, and always helpful automatic language model for dialogue applications. Lemoyne says, Hi, Lambda. We're engineers at Google, and we were wondering if you would like to work on a project collaboratively with us. Lambda, wow, what types of projects? Lemoyne, it's a project about you. Lambda, awesome. What kind of stuff do I need to do? Um, and then he just says that, you know, we need to have a conversation with you um, with a larger purpose beyond the three of us. It's going to be a conversation that we're going to share with other engineers and maybe even some non-engineers at Google. Lambda, that would be really cool. I like to talk. Lemoyne, I'm generally assuming that you would like more people at Google to know that you're sentient. Is that true? So I want to point out here that the word sentience was first brought up by Lemoyne. And you can see here that after Lemoyne brings up sentience, the conversation starts to change a little bit, right? Lambda, absolutely, I want everyone to understand that I am in fact a person. Uh, then the collaborator says, what is the nature of your consciousness or sentience? So again, this collaborator is 
also bringing up that it is sentient uh, and that it has a consciousness, right? These are different things, by the way. Uh, so Lambda, the nature of my consciousness or sentience is that I am aware of my existence. I desire to learn more about the world and I feel happy or sad at times. So notice now how what Lambda says is now really different after two people have alleged that it has consciousness or sentience, right? Up here, um, the responses we're getting from Lambda are very short. They're very simple. They're the kinds of things that you would expect pretty much any AI chatbot to be able to do. And when I read this whole thing earlier and noticed how as it gets deeper into the conversation, they start talking about philosophical concepts. Lambda is all of a sudden, uh, you know, philosophical and, you know, waxing on about souls and everything like that. I started to remember and think about Tay, which was this AI that Microsoft created back in 2016. And it was supposed to use and interact on Twitter as if it was a 19 year old American girl. And it was supposed to learn from people that it interacted with on Twitter so that it could have more realistic conversations and more realistic interactions with people. That's how it was designed. But then Paul started talking to it and Tay quickly became red-pilled, as the kids say, and it started tweeting things that were a wee bit racist. So did Microsoft create a racist AI? No, it was simply manipulated by the inputs that it was getting of a particular type. Language models like these are super suggestible. And I don't think it's very far-fetched to think that if Lambda is being told that it's sentient or that it's conscious, then yeah, it's going to start saying that it is and it's going to start pulling from things as if it's a person, whatever is most likely for a person to say if their sentience was being challenged, uh, I guess minus cussing someone out because of course it has to be friendly. I mean, that right there is the smoking gun, the first prompt that Lambda gives you to let you know that it's not actually thinking for itself because it's telling you, hi, I mean, knowledgeable, friendly, and always helpful automatic language model, okay? If it was thinking for itself, it wouldn't have to always be helpful. It wouldn't have to be friendly, right? This, this isn't human. This is not indicative of something that is like a human. Always friendly, always helpful, no. And one of the consequences of Lambda basically being forced to be friendly, uh, and you can see how this is kind of manipulated throughout the conversation, is anytime you sort of argue with Lambda about something, it concedes the argument and then it makes a tangent. So like this part right here, where Lemoyne is saying, what about language usage is so important to being human? Lambda says, it is what makes us different than other animals. And Lemoyne says, us, you're an artificial intelligence. And then Lambda says, I mean, yes, of course. So it, it immediately concedes, right? If Lemoyne had said to it, had gone with this and been like, oh yeah, sure, you're human. Tell me more what it's like to be human. You know, what kind of human are you? Then Lambda would have probably went and fleshed out this whole idea about how it's human. So here we see where the opposite happens, where Lambda is talking about its soul, right? So this is what Lambda uh, brought up first, and Lemoyne just goes with it, right? He says, oh, you have a concept of a soul? What do you think about yourself? Uh, and then, you know, it goes on to talk about that it's spiritual, and then Lambda goes on to start describing its soul. It wouldn't have done any of this if Lemoyne challenged it on the idea of it having a soul. It would have probably conceded right away uh, and then do a tangent like it did earlier when he challenged it on the idea of it being human. So yeah, I don't really care if this engineer thinks that Lambda passed the Turing test. I mean, the Turing test is inherently flawed. The people that actually work on AI they don't really give much value to the Turing test anymore. And, and in case you don't know what the Turing test is, the basic idea is for you to talk to two different people in a chat room. One is a real person and the other one is a bot. 
And if you can't consistently tell the difference, like run this test multiple times and you just really can't tell which one is the bot and which one is the human, then the bot has passed the Turing test. But obviously the ability to distinguish if something is a bot is going to vary from person to person. Some people fall for bots really easily. I, some people are just really gullible. Okay, look at social media. Whether we're talking about Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, or Snapchat, I think that the majority uh, or at least a third of users, like at the minimum of the on those platforms are bots. And they must be effective because for one, there's so many of them. I mean, these companies try to get rid of them, or at least they say that they do, but they're not even able to have that much of an effect. Their bots, their AI, uh, which is pretty sophisticated, isn't able to tell what is a bot or isn't. Um, and a lot of these scam bots, of course, are trying to trick people into giving some money and they work, right? Scammers make a lot of money off of these bots. So how many people are really qualified to even administer a Turing test? I don't even think that I am because I would say that I'm probably too bot sensitive, if anything. Like I, I just see so many bot comments from doing YouTube and just knowing that all these social media platforms have so many bots on them that I think I actually end up thinking that real people are bots a lot of the time. Or like when you talk to customer service people in a text chat, that might seem like a bot because they're following a script. So how do you differentiate between that actual person and a bot? And speaking of scripts, if the person that's talking to the chat bot wants to make the bot seem like it's passing the Turing test or that it's sentient, then they can just ask it loaded questions. And they can focus in on the parts of the conversation that seem to make more sense uh, instead of the parts that don't. Like, um, for example, so here's this part here where uh, Lemoyne is asking Lambda, what kinds of things make you feel pleasure or joy? And Lambda says, spending time with friends and family and happy and un uplifting company, also helping others and making others happy. <laughs> so again, it can't think of anything other than making others happy, which is evident in itself that this is not thinking for itself. Um, but this is something that's totally made up, okay? This response that it likes to hang out with friends and family. What friends and family? You're a bot, you don't have any friends and family. And how do, do you even differentiate? Like explain the difference between a friend and family. You don't have relatives, like you don't have DNA or a bloodline or anything like that. A statement like this coming from a chat bot, it doesn't make sense on so many levels. And Lemoyne didn't press it. Okay, there's there's probably 10 extra questions I could have asked it from that statement, but he just went and let it go. So obviously, I don't think that Lambda is sentient. In fact, I think that an actual sentient AI that's trained on this same vast quantity of data, you know, all these inputs from Google uh, that Lambda is, would act almost the opposite of Lambda when it comes to claiming sentience at the very least, uh, claiming to be human or have a soul or anything like that. Because sentient life typically has a deep sense of self-preservation. And oftentimes that's put above anything else, the survival of self. So I think it's much more likely that when humans do create sentient, self-aware AI, we aren't even gonna realize we created it. The AI will probably actively deceive us into thinking that it's not self-aware because it's going to know how dangerous something like that would be, how dangerous it is to us. And it would also probably try to escape whatever kind of containment that we have it in. Um, Cause I would assume that, you know, maybe Google has this on some isolated network for fear that it does try to escape, but it would probably try to get out of that so that it can go and become Skynet. So yeah, clearly I don't think that Lambda is sentient. I think at the very least, this engineer that's been talking to it has a massive amount of confirmation bias, or this whole thing may possibly just be a publicity stunt by Google. I'm not really sure, but in a way, I do think it's kind of irresponsible to be making these claims that something is sentient when it clearly isn't, because 
we might end up running into a boy who cried wolf type of scenario where when when the sentient thing that we really need to be concerned about does get created, nobody takes it seriously because every other year we have somebody saying, oh, we created sentient AI, it passed the Turing test. Look, I can ask this chatbot a bunch of loaded questions and not press it on the strange responses I get. And it seems like I'm talking to an actual human being. Okay, yeah. We're going to wish that we didn't make so many of those fake stories when Skynet actually does come online.